you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly, also known as the R&B King. Throughout the case against R. Kelly, there has been a tendency to assume consenting adults are victims which is not true and will never get anywhere close to the truth. The only reason being the government which had run out of witnesses to stage against the R&B King needed to justify the said victimhood of some of these false accusers who clearly met R. Kelly when they were way above the age of 18. The government which through the media had made plenty accusations against R. Kelly was not going to swallow their pride and agree that there was indeed not real case against him, and so they needed to turn stories of adult women who had met R. Kelly when they were already above the federal age of consent into said victims. In fact, if Lisa Van Allen had not been busted and her true age when she met R. Kelly determined as different from what she had initially alleged, until today, she would still be on the victim list and would have shared in the bounty that was sarcastically referred to as restitutions like any of the accusers deserved it. Government was clearly in the business of manufacturing victims from nowhere, and this is why we will forever wonder how some of these women who clearly didn't qualify ended up on the victim list. And such is the story of accuser Faith Rogers, who according to her own story met R. Kelly when she was already 19 years old and already sexually active with other men. None of Kelly's accusers says they were a virgin but for some reason, the only lover in their bad books is R. Kelly and not those that came before him. Many believe it's because pressing these other men that came before would not yield the kind of dollars they are receiving for betraying R. Kelly. And therefore R. Kelly is currently in prison for loving consenting adult women who only found it lucrative business to extort him further through lawsuits that have until today remained completely unjustified. The charges that were placed against R. Kelly on account of Faith Rogers' stories have since remained questionable, considering they both are of no substantial claim only suggesting that R. Kelly engaged in sexual misconduct whose illegality cannot be pointed out. The allegation that because on the single encounter when the adult woman who had come to meet her newfound love, and to engage in their usual acts of sexual intercourse found a gun lying on the table makes it an act of forced labor is not only vague, but also a clear misinterpretation of the supreme law. These forced labor allegations remain false and inappropriate for the case against R. Kelly, and were wrongfully introduced just so the government could have another witness against him. The definition of forced labor is very clear, and it involves situations where people are coerced or compelled to work. In this case however, R. Kelly did not coerce anybody to engage in any act of labor, let alone sexual intercourse with him. Even if this particular time a gun was found lying on his table, Whatever act the two engaged in is the very same thing they did and enjoyed routinely with no guns lying on the table which disqualifies it as forced labor. This is to mean that whatever the act was, it was not an act done out of fear or force imposed on the alleged victim. This is comparable to suggesting that asking a renowned swimmer to jump into into a swimming pool on their own will is in any way an act of coercion, or one that is done with the purpose of endangering the person. If you want to endanger a swimmer, you do not ask them to swim. This woman had sought out R. Kelly multiple times on her own and engaged intimately with him in a similar manner. We therefore cannot be quick to call her hobby of sleeping around with her newfound love an act of forced labor. The second charge R. Kelly was subjected to as a result of Faith Rogers' accusations was the Man Act violation, and just like it was misused when trying legendary heavyweight boxing champion Jack Johnson, this law has time and again been wrongfully applied. It turns out government is no longer interested in applying these charges for their intended purpose at time of enactment. When it is convenient that the act be invoked, the government will not hesitate to apply it even if it doesn't make any sense. According to her story, R. Kelly did transport Faith Rogers to another state other than his hometown, and there he indulged in sexual activity exposing her to an STD without her prior consent. While this allegation is highly contestable, assuming it was true still doesn't justify the Mann Act charges Mr. Kelly was subjected to. For the Mann Act to apply, there must be proof of immoral conduct and this must be the purpose of the interstate commerce or call it transportation. The act of transmitting an STD being the criminal act does not necessarily make it the purpose of transportation, and therefore this cannot be addressed as a Mann Act violation. And besides, 
there was no motivation for R. Kelly to prefer to carry out the exposure to an STD in the destination state where it was equally punishable by law. The state of California also did have laws prohibiting such exposure, and to therefore conclude that the purpose of travel was to commit crime in the destination is a completely misplaced assumption. In order for the Mann Act to apply, both elements of transportation in interstate commerce and purpose of transportation must be fully satisfied. In fact the Mann Act which was enacted in 1910 specifies that it is illegal to transport women across state lines within the United States or lands owned and controlled by the U.S. for the purpose of engaging in immoral sex acts or prostitution. Clearly the act of transportation and purpose have to go hand in hand and when one element is not satisfied, this act cannot be applied. In the case of Faith Rogers and R. Kelly, the act of having sex in another state alone was not enough to suggest the sex acts were immoral or in any way a form of prostitution. These were two consenting adults who did not travel on purpose to have illegal or immoral sex as the law suggests, and fact that they ended up having it does not necessarily make it immoral. If government suggests that because by doing this the woman was exposed to an STD without prior knowledge and that this makes the act immoral, it still does not qualify this exposure as the actual purpose of travel. Remember according to the law, to engage in the immoral sex act must be the purpose of travel and this was not the case. And this returns us to the point that consenting adults were fictitiously qualified as victims while dealing with R. Kelly's legal matters which is not right by law. For a lack of credible witnesses to present before court, the government carefully transgressed into manufacturing witnesses, and this saw them present consenting adults as victims which was not legally possible considering the sexual acts if any were primarily consensual, and that none of these mature women was physically abused in any way. It's so sad to observe how the US Department of Justice continues to misuse enactments of this kind to abuse the rights of citizens whenever they want to take down a target, even if we have so many videos all over the internet that regrettably show how this same misuse of the law has been done in the past. Another successful black man Jack Johnson being the first victim of this same man act would be enough reason for the department to act carefully when it's R. Kelly's turn, but do they even care? Our government will act oblivious to these issues, and pretend not to care that Donald Trump had to apologetically pardon Jack Johnson even in his death to save this nation the shame of being the fathers of global injustice especially against people of color. According to Kelly Kidd Speaking of the Mann Act, it is so ancient that I don't even understand how it came to be introduced into R. Kelly's case. The same law has been used over decades to punish black men for what they didn't do wrong. And it's back in 2022? How is this even possible? It's a shame that our justice system will blind itself to the injustice it proliferates especially against black people in this country. It's so unfair that the R&B King is locked up on such baseless allegations of forced labor and Man Act violation that simply don't add up. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.